auf. There is no mistaking the arena, there's no mistaking the combatants. We are at the Rose Bowl in Southern California. It's Pasadena Palace to all things great and sporting. And we have two great names from the world's game here to entertain us tonight. Let's check on the starting lineups, and we'll start with Real Madrid. The first look, Casey, at what the post Karim Benzema era might look like, and a sneak peek at what the Jude Bellingham era might bring. Yeah, Lunin in goal, and then and really you have between you know Militao, Nacho, Vasquez, Mendy, and then that midfield. You know the midfield where Kamavinga with. Cruz is the veteran who's in there running the show. Valverde, who came up with some spectacular goals from distance. And then, obviously, Jude Bellingham with that massive transfer to come in. Yes, all eyes on the Real Madrid. Number five, after his big money move from Borussia Dortmund. Timothy Ford leading the All-American officiating crew. But there's another big arrival who has Dortmund in his past on the AC Milan side, and that's Christian Pulisic. A lot of eyes on him, particularly here in Southern California. He plays from the start after his $20 million move from Chelsea, Casey. Yeah, yeah, I think this, this AC Milan side, it's about organizing defensively, but really trying to figure out that attack. And clearly some big names are missing from this AC Milan attack. But Pulisic got off to a good start in the first preseason friendly against lower division opposition with a couple assists. Loftus Cheek as well joining Pulisic from Chelsea will look to make a bright start in his AC Milan. It's a blend of established players and new arrivals on both sides of the ball, particularly for the Rossoneri. AC Milan and Real Madrid. It doesn't get much bigger than this, and certainly the venue doesn't either. First meeting on US soil for these two juggernauts since 2012. They played on the other side of the country at Yankee Stadium. That was before Yankee Stadium became a more regular fixture for the sport of football. And that was a very different era that night. Real Madrid won 5-1 with two goals from Cristiano Ronaldo with Jose Mourinho at the helm. All set for action in Southern California. AC Milan are going to be wearing the white. Real Madrid in the darker uniforms. Adrian Healy and Casey Keller on board with you. So glad you could uh, join us. The first dose of action in this preseason for Real Madrid after two weeks of training. They've been here in Southern California since Thursday. Real Madrid have already had their one friendly, which they won comfortably, but it's these two juggernauts who've followed very similar paths over the last couple of seasons. We'll get things underway here. Both of them remember winning their league titles in 2022. Both of them failing to defend their league titles last year. And both of them, Casey, of course, making the Champions League semi-finals before exiting. So, yeah, there's no question that it was seasons that could have been for both these sides that didn't quite work out. And when you have the history of both these sides, there's an expectation that trophies are continually flowing into the trophy cabinet. Last season was a little bit of a blip for Real Madrid, and obviously in this process for AC Milan to get back to the heights where they were a decade or so ago, it's still part of that process moving forward. 21 European Cup or Champions League titles between these two clubs. Is, uh, Kamavinga leads the charge. Runs into uh, resistance from Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who gets his first tackle in as, a, as an AC Milan player. Yeah, track back really well where it looked like Kamavinga was maybe going to be able to run quite a distance to get into the AC Milan back third, but good work from Loftus-Cheek. And then Jude Bellingham back. 
taking the floor with a first look at his footwork and dribbling skills. 100 million euros, the fee to bring Bellingham to the Spanish capital. A fee that could rise significantly as well. Considerably less there. Marcelo getting his first touch. The slip was an unfortunate one for young Lorenzo Colombo. He's going to be leading the line from the start tonight for AC Milan. Yeah, I think the point you made earlier that it is a combination between veterans, young players, and new signings for both teams. So it's opportunities for everybody. Crowd roaring. Valverde on the cross from Lucas Vasquez is charged down, and Pulisic. Can get on the ball. Going to be really fascinated to see whether Christian Pulisic can make his mark right from the word go in Italy. It can be a tough lead to go do, can't it, Casey? Well, particularly for probably a player that is more used to being on the offensive side of things. We know traditionally Italy has been a very defensive-minded league, a very defensive-minded footballing country, and so for the attacking creative players, sometimes they get left. Maybe out on an island a little bit, but Italian football is trying to change that. They're trying to be more attack minded. They're trying to be more progressive in the attacking third. And I think when you look at you know Christian coming into this side, the bigger question maybe is going to be will he be on the left side? Because we know Leao yeah. has pretty much made that position his own. So then with him not in the lineup today, it fits really well for Christian to be out on the left. But if he's in the lineup and the two of them in the lineup together, it'll be interesting to see where they all fit in. He was joking with the media just uh, yesterday about how this US tour isn't exactly helping him uh, bed in and learn Italian with his teammates. So right back on home soil. Of course, he has some familiar faces in the likes of Loftus Cheek and Tamori, former Chelsea teammates. Giroud as well, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, it, it, it is. There is some familiarity there, which definitely makes the comfort level that much easier. But then at the same time, you don't want it to be too comfortable. You always want to be on that edge. Here's Brahim Diaz, one of the Real Madrid new arrivals. Of course, up against the club he spent the last three years with. moment for him tonight to get back in a Real Madrid shirt and be going against Stacey Milan. Nicely works. Just a little too strong for Mondi to uh, be able to haul it in. Yeah, very close to coming off a good combination play, and then he just couldn't get on the end of it to be able to bring it down and put a dangerous ball in the box. That is Marco Sportiello in goal tonight for the Rossoneri, another of their new arrivals. No stranger to Serie A, played with Atalanta last year and Fiorentina prior to that. Florenzi trying to cushion it forward to Colombo. Bellingham. Real Madrid surging forward with numbers. Little leaf. Nicely done by Brahim. Cruz. To Valverde, encouraged to shoot. And that is going to be the first corner of the evening. I don't think Valverde needs a lot of encouragement to shoot from distance. Showed last season his ability from outside the 18. And that time the deflection led to the corner. Real Madrid looking to sustain some pressure in the AC Milan penalty box. And a quickly taken two on corner as well. Cruz with some quick thinking. Lucas Vasquez with an invitation attached to the shot. Was low. And fizzed, and just the wrong side of Sport Yellow's goal, Valverde again. Yeah, Valverde really came from a distance. Is it, come on, you see, he just understood the understanding 
between Vasquez and Valverde where they're going to be placed into that space 24 yards out. Great strike. But just wide the Sportiello's left hand post. Florenzi. This plays four ball easily uh, picked off by Militao. Yeah, early on, Real Madrid have done a good job when AC Milan have had possession in their back four is pressing enough, forcing a ball over distance to see if they can combine. And Real Madrid have done an excellent job of them keeping that possession and trying to combine in these kind of areas where. AC Milan have done just enough in that last minute to either make the block or the interception or the pass maybe was just that little bit too strong to be able to bring down and put that AC Milan defense under more pressure and see if they can get that early goal. Trinic forced to wheel around in the Milan midfield. Lorenzi with an adventurous ball, which had to be a good one. Ruben Loftus cheek. With a push on, taking on Camavinga. Pulisic lurking left hand side of the penalty area. Looking for a quick combination. Perhaps the shot was on there. Pobega seeing his effort charged down. Pulisic tearing up Pabega with uh, some quick footwork. And the layoff from Colombo is the Rossoneri. On the move again, Pulisic gets isolated. Can he find the right cross? He can, and it needed Mondi's intervention at the last to put it behind to safety. Yeah, it's been two really good plays in succession from Christian Pulisic getting isolated out on the wing and then finding the opportunity. It gets blocked down to go to his left, so he comes back quickly on his right and puts a very dangerous ball into the box. Well defended by Mendy at the far post, but good work from Christian Pulisic. At, to put a dangerous ball in and give Milan the opportunity. Macias, the Brazilian. The far side is going to take this. Six to aim for inside the penalty area. The near post flick arrived. It was uh, emergency measures taken by Valverde to clear it behind. It's a really it's a flat surface into the box and it's, it's not cleared well at the near post and tomorrow was lurking but as you mentioned cleared well yeah when needed to be by Valverde it was right in the vicinity wasn't he tomorrow and he'll stay there could get on the end of this he was crashing in the Latau had other ideas It's been a good spell for the last couple minutes from Milan, being able to pick up second ball possession and then creating opportunities to put dangerous balls into the box. There you go, just uh, some cross wires almost. Another foot in there to win it back. Bellingham. Get behind Valverde. Lunin playing from the start tonight in goal for Real Madrid. He started last season in goal, didn't he, for the Merengues? Of course, out of action. Ten minutes in here at the Rose Bowl. Real Madrid and AC Milan. Season in 2021 in Austria, a game that finished 0 0. It's a game in which date David Alaba made his debut. Gareth Bale missed a penalty. I 
think Simmons is just getting a little bit of a talking to. It's always that's always the tricky part. You want the match to be as competitive as possible, but then there's always that understanding that look, this is a this is a preseason game. Let's not get anybody injured here because of a rash challenge. So nothing too much in it, but there was some conversations just to remind everybody. Yeah. Two players, the two protagonists, both very eager to make an early mark. Giancarlo Simic, the young defender for AC Milan, and Joselu. Where's the number 14 shirt for the first time tonight for Real Madrid? And what a task he has, Casey, at least for now. <laughs> yeah, to, uh, you need to be the new Benzema. No, that's <laughs> not going to happen. So, I mean, I think there's an expectation from everybody with with Real Madrid as we see Bellingham just a little push in the back and Krunic but that that Real Madrid will be going into the transfer market to find that marquee striker sooner rather than later. Yeah. It's an easy take for Lunin catching practice for him. As he said at the moment it's Marcelo Schurz. It's Really clever from Brahim Diaz, who's had some sparkling early touches. Taking it over, and Marcelo on full stretch couldn't quite connect with a toe end. Well, it starts further up the pitch where it does a really good job, as you mentioned, from Diaz to create, and then combines back once again with Lucas Vasquez. And and then attacks the line, which is nice. It, look, it's always a difficult angle coming across there from his, Jose Lu to be able to get enough purchase on the strike to, to really trouble Sportiello in goal, but good combination play on this right-hand side to create the opportunity. It really has been a remarkable journey to this point for the 33-year-old Jose Lu. Don't have to go back that far, Casey, to find him being sixth choice striker at Stoke City and unable to get a game there. But of course, he's back to where it all began for him. He was out of the uh, Real Madrid Academy, played for the Castilla team, and always dreamt about coming back one day. Seemed to be un unlikely. Well, but he's gotten his opportunity, and because of whatever reason, and as of right now, with with lack of somebody else or it's his position to lose so make the most of it. Bellingham. Lovely work from him. Andy trying to guide Camavinga for Camavinga uh, trying some sorcery there against Calabria. It's a good layoff. AC Milan on the counter attack here. Ruben Loftus cheek. It's a sharp point of the attacking dagger, but a misplayed pass will end the move. Yeah, that's that. Those are the expectations you see in preseason with new players not quite on the same page with each other. Obviously, by the time the season starts, so much of that will be cleaned up. But a promising chance for Milan on the break that comes away from the air pass. Just cheek like his former Chelsea teammate Pulisic looking for a, a fresh start, a new opportunity. Slightly more advanced in his career at the age of 27 as Colombo didn't hear the approaching footsteps. And the pumping up of the volume here is the first uh, Mexican wave. Going around the Rose Bowl, something that's still traditional here as Pulisic picks off that errant clearance. Pulisic trying to tee it up for Loftus Cheek and sold him just a little short. That was really well read by Tony Cruz, who then starts the counter attack. But AC Milan had a good shape defensively with five back, but it starts to open up a little bit more as reinforcements were slow. Now, Brahim Diaz has stayed down. Jude Bellingham who played in the past was appealing in the direction of Timothy Ford, who is distinctly unimpressed. Raheem is back on his feet. It's 
three years he spent on roll with AC Milan. Raheem, 91 appearances in Serie A, but he, he admitted he's never stopped thinking about a time where he might return to Real Madrid. So he originally belonged to Manchester City. Madrid signed him in 2019. To the area, oh, and Colombo could have made an early name for himself. Lorenzo Colombo, the 21 year old, did the starting role tonight. He really caught hold of this, Casey. Yeah, it's good work again, pressing from Milan. And in between Mendy and Gamavinga, possessions gifted to Colombo from the top of the box. And it's a good strike with his left foot, but always going over the bar, never really troubling Lunin. But what an opportunity! That was gifted to Colombo from the good press from Milan. Yeah, there's been a couple of sloppy moments out of the bag, haven't there, for, for Real Madrid? Well, it's their first match. I mean, you know, it's, normally, those first matches come with lower division opposition, and you're able to work your way through some things. Well, Ancelotti saying, no, we don't need that. We're going to go straight to some big boys, and our guys will figure it out. One game came against uh, third division opponents in Lumazzane last week. A uh, morale boosting 7 0 win to start their preseason campaign and now looking to push on is Pulisic again, who's seen a lot of the ball. There we go, it's even a little more than Jude Bellingham. Into touch it goes. Yeah, I think this is going to be a little different role for Jude Bellingham at Real Madrid than it was for Dortmund. He had a lot of freedom. Some of the question marks going into Bellingham is, is, is would he have the discipline that would be expected of him at Real Madrid? Now, you can only ask somebody to do something and, and, and make sure that they do it the way you want it to be done. And I, I can't imagine there's a better person than Carlo Ancelotti to have a young player and get them to perform the way you would like them to perform but a lot of expectation on a player when you have that hundred million dollar price tag on your head. Yep. He's been so accustomed in his career to setting new marks. Youngest ever goal scorer for Dortmund as uh, the recovery was a fair one. Mondi the well-timed tackle left a victim down out of your picture. Well, he gave the ball away, and that's what you love seeing from any player that is guilty of giving possession away, that they work as hard as possible to get back and, and, and win it back. And it, it did. It looked like from the angle we saw that it was a fair challenge on Loftus-Cheek, who's a little slow to get up. I think it was just unfortunate he just goes to strike the ball on goal and just catches him. of the uh, the spray on Loftus cheek who joined the uh, Chelsea Youth Academy the tender age of eight had been a Chelsea first team player since 2014 had had to you know, go out on loans to the likes of Crystal Palace at Fulham but actually coming off a Premier League season in which he played his most appearances for the blue part of West London made 25 Premier League appearances last year proved to be his final one. Yeah, and the last thing that he would like to do is in his first appearance in the first half, or I guess in, in the first appearance for a in, in a more, I guess, visible role than the than the lower division game that you mentioned, you forementioned. But yeah, you, you, the last thing you want to do is get injured early, and you, you want to have that opportunity to truly prove yourself. So hopefully Loftus-Cheek will be fine and be able to continue. Well, while we have 
just a moment, Casey. I want to assure viewers of ours in the United States watching on ESPN that our colleague Shaka Hislop is OK. He is... Uh, Recover. Didn't didn't see the incident, Casey, but I'm sure it was an alarming one. Uh, we've been told definitive terms that he is okay. He was working on the sideline pre-game. We know that. Tony Cruz. It's Real Madrid trying to go back to this is again to Bellingham. Lovely cut and Bellingham asking for a handball. Timothy Ford. Perfectly good view of it, waving aside those appeals. And now Camavinga to Cruz from distance. It's a couple of efforts that have whistled just past Sportiello's near post. Again, really good combination. Bellingham comes through. I thought right there he had an opportunity to cut it to Camavinga. In the end, elects to take that touch and hit it himself. Nothing wrong with what Jude Bellingham making that decision. And then it just took a, a really nice block. And then eventually it falls out to Cruz with the good shot from distance. But again, just misses the post. And then this time it's good pressure from Real Madrid winning the ball back with Kamavinga. Yeah, he's had an all action start to the evening, isn't he, Eduardo Kamavinga? Start of his third season now with the Merengues. Only missed one game last year, Camavinga, in the whole of the La Liga campaign. Marcelo peeling away, staying on side, walking the tightrope. Loftus Cheek getting his own back on Camavinga and emerging with it. Build up there on the counter attack for AC Milan Macias. He's eventually caught and he has won the free kick. Andre Lunin, the Ukrainian. Get his defensive uh, cover sorted out. Six standing over the ball for the Rossoneri. Well, did Pulisic touch that off? Looks like he hadn't actually touched it, Casey, but didn't, didn't touch much of it. <laughs> the header down for Colombo just behind him. He's in retrieval mode and does well just to come up with a corner. I think in the end that was probably the best case scenario as it as it fell in just to win the corner, get reorganized, continue to put pressure on the Real Madrid back line and, and still waiting to see who's gonna break the deadlock. Well it's feeding it in and it's AC Milan who have broken the deadlock. Fantastic corner and a thumping header from close range from Tomori. Oh, the Rossoneri fans may be outnumbered here. And it's they who are making the noise at the Rose Bowl. Yeah, just really good service into the box. Maybe a little bit of a question on Lunin with the ball coming that much into the six yard box that maybe he could come out and help his defense but it's really poor marking from Real Madrid and Tamori couldn't believe that he was that wide open four yards out. And Christian Pulisic gets the assist as well with a perfectly placed corner into the six yard box. And for Pulisic, it's, it's so important coming into a new club with a new opportunity, trying to win over a new set of teammates, coaches, fans, that you just continue to contribute. 
coming off of a, a two assist game against lower division opposition in his first match already in this first half contributing from the run of play and then off the set piece. Goal made in West London and scored in Southern California for AC Milan. Such is the nature of the world game. As Tamori is back in his well, custom role, dealing with the cross. And now what can Real Madrid do to respond? There have been signs, haven't there, through the first 20 minutes or so that AC Milan are going to get their chances tonight. And Ruben Loftus-Cheek marauding through midfield territory again. It's picked up on the move, and a second is not that far away. Yeah, again, Loftus-Cheek does a great job of just running at the defence. And Messi gets a good opportunity and a good look at goal and doesn't miss by much. No. Nope. But so much of that starts from just Loftus Cheek picking up possession, running at Real Madrid and making things happen. Junior Macias. Uh, sometimes not the most popular player in the, in the Milan first team squad. I think it's fair to say, but uh, it does weigh in. Important contribution every now and then. Got five goals last season. Well, I think that's the key. I think the key is that those contributions get more consistent. And there was a great opportunity on the break to be able to add to those contributions and just was unable to capitalize on the strike. There was six ball inside. He's the. Uh... By Cruz now Bellingham. Lucas Vasquez heading inside with intent, looking for an outlet, looking across to Mondi. Marcelo beaten to it by Giancarlo Simic. Lottie hinted he might try something a little different early on in this new season. With no Karim Benzema to lead the attacks on thoughts that Vinny Jr. and Rodrigo will eventually be a pair. As that cross takes a deflection into the arms of Sporty Yellow. Well, thinking of how much in the offensive half of the field that Benzema was involved on either provider or goal scorer over the last decade more or less yeah um, of course without a like for like replacement there is an idea that they're going to have to do something different yeah well, Bellingham brings something different by design doesn't he it's a nice layoff Raheem trying to return the favor just beyond the reach of Bellingham yeah it really was unlucky for Bellingham again he, he's shown a couple times in this match when he picks up possession in that final third to be able to run at the defense and create chances for Real Madrid and that time just needed the return pass on the cross a little bit lower from Diaz. It's a uh, Milan player down. It is Macias. It is. So we reached the half hour point here at the Rose Bowl. Players will take this opportunity to take on board some some liquids as Macias. Yeah, Macias was kind of holding his hip outside of his his thigh after the, the strike or the contact when he was under pressure before he was shooting from distance. I don't know if that's still the issue. And in preseason, clearly you don't want to fight through anything. You might as well come off, make sure it doesn't linger as you go into preseason. And so it doesn't surprise me that Macias just goes down and says you know what it's probably better that I come off and probably was going to come off at halftime anyway if he wasn't coming off at the 30th minute. Carlo Ancelotti saying he was very happy with the summer business Real Madrid did despite uh, no direct replacement for Karim Benzema. Of course every chance there could be a big name still to come. 
terms of Kylian Mbappe and Lautaro Martinez uh, near the top of that particular list. It's uh, substitution coming for AC Milan. I think it's going to be Luca Romero, the young Argentine, who's going to enter. And indeed, it is Macias who is going to replace. Luca Romero, another new arrival in Milan. Good for uh, Lazio, who was their youngest ever scorer. Luca Romero, at the age of 16 years and nine months. First player born in the year 2004, Casey, to <laughs> score in Serie A. That, doesn't that make you feel young? Oh, yes, very young. Involved immediately. Work from Nacho to hold that attack. Nacho, by the way, uh, the captain now. Host Karim Benzema is on the ball. He's actually the only player involved tonight that played in the last meeting on US soil between these two teams in 2012. Fourteenth year with Real Madrid. Marcelo and hustle to make himself available for the ball. Nice layoff. for company. Cruz to Lucas Vasquez. He's trying to work it for Balagam, whose instinctive touch is in the vicinity of Brahim. that excellent press to win the ball back after what was a very promising play that didn't quite come off in the last minute with that with that layoff but anytime you can have that effort to win the ball back in your opponent's half as Real Madrid look to find the equalizer before the half ends some early embryonic signs of uh, Bellingham and Brahim well I think both sides have to be very happy with some of the the way the new players have contributed in the attacking third in particular and yes there's no, there's no question that Bellingham has, has shown you know Brian Diaz as well has looked very lively on this right hand side you know as has Loftus Cheek as has Pulisic for Milan yep, the attacks overall have had the upper hand haven't they it's made for an entertaining spectacle thus far Yeah, I mean, in these type of preseason games where probably the majority will be playing 45 minutes and probably no more than 60, you know, the idea is to get as much fitness as you can in that period of time. Don't hold anything back because we're going to take you out if we think that you're going to be fatigued. So let's keep working on those fitness levels. We know it's, you know, for Real, it's their first game. You know, for Milan, it's their second, but their first one against a, you know, a, a more formidable opponent. So, so yeah, there's there, there's clearly no reason to to think that hold something back for 90 minutes. Get that fitness exercise in as needed, because players will tell you Adrian, you'd much rather run in a match than with the fitness coach at training. So get that get that running in today, so you don't have to do it tomorrow. <laughs> A loose touch from Lucas Vasquez. Pulisic doing well to recover after his feet went from under him, and uh, well, it was an inadvertent. His little trailing arm, maybe. Yeah, flailing hand. Militao, or Militao, I should say, was on the end of it. He seemed to be uh, 
incidental for Pulisic. Have another look at it here. Yeah, he kind of slipped, but then did a really good job, and then the arm comes around and catches him. And yeah, I, I agree. It's it's incidental, but yeah, you know, I, I, I can see where the whistle went. Unfortunately, because it looked like you know Pulisic had done an excellent job to be able to recover from the slip and, and look like he had sprung AC Milan on a on an excellent chance to get at the back four. But, yeah, Bellingham with some space to surge into. Language dribbling style of his Brahim hasn't been afraid to shoot on sight tonight. That one clattering into a wall of white. And there's that press once again from AC Milan. Against that defense and Real Madrid continue in possession to try to create the chances, but every time it looks like Real Madrid after the press winning possession back. But AC Milan collapses so well defensively and comes up with the key block when they've needed it in this first half. Corner kick, which Tony Cruz is awaiting to deliver here. Everyone back for the Rossoneri. Cruz. Serving it, Joselu trying to get airborne, and Cruz quick to nip in there and win it back. And then just tries to clip that ball into a dangerous area, but once again, when Milan needs a player in the right position, they have him. Bellingham getting free! And the shot from Militao. Seemed to be goal-bound, but Simic and his body on the line. And once again, when they've needed a player to to put their body on the line. It's a good flick in, it's a good volley, but as you said, Simic just throws his body and comes up with the key block, gets his arms tucked in so there's no issue with a handball. Now, Juan Carlos Simic has been in the eye of the storm and he's done really well. The Primavera player, one of several called up for this US draw by C. Milan. Is Stefano Pioli at the start of what will be his fifth season in charge. And sometimes, Adrian, when you get those opportunities in preseasons, it's not necessarily about the immediacy. It's about proving that if the opportunity arises later, if there's some injuries, if there's some form issues, that you proved yourself at this time to then be given the chance. So it's, it's not always just about, hey, can I make the squad now, but can this squad trust? Calabria. And that press, I think that is something, I think if, you were, if we were to speak with Carlo Ancelotti right now, it, it looks like after covering Real Madrid so much last year, that there's one of those wrinkles that maybe they're trying to do this year that's a little bit different, is press the ball higher up the field, see if they can could win the ball back in more dangerous areas. Yeah. Every chance, of course, we're going to see uh, some of the other big names in this Merengue squad in the second half. And of course, you start with Vinicius Junior and Rodrigo. Luka Modric is here. In terms of the new arrivals, will we see Arda Gule, the young Turkish wonder kid, Fran Garcia? Also, a new arrival. Yeah, I'd heard that Gulen may be struggling with just a, a, a little bit of a tweak from training and might not be risked for this match, but supposedly he's impressed massively in the early training sessions so far. Be training uh, just down the road from here at uh, the lovely campus of UCLA, where they feel very much at home. Carlo Ancelotti loves the surroundings the university campus. Who wouldn't, Casey? It's a fabulous place to come at this time of the year. Not quite as fabulous was the challenge from Kamavinga, deemed to be unfair by Timothy Ford. Yeah, it all started with a with an unnecessary back heel from Bellingham, which gave posi possession to AC Milan, and and then his loftus cheek looks to to come back inside collision. Kamavinga, a little high five between the two, just saying no ill intent. Run off the 
Bournes into space, the cross in. Put a pinball inside the penalty area for London. <laughs> Lacks clearance though by the Macy Milan team is punished in some style and it's Luca Romero off the bench and into the headlines. What a hit from Romero. And it's the Rossoneri who double their advantage here. You said it was just a loose clearance that was won back very well, and and then it bounces like it's just unnecessary, but it's it's well won. And as it comes back inside, it bounces nicely, and you know it's it's preseason for goalkeepers as well. And Luna never really got his angle properly positioned, and Luca Romero punished him at that near post. Young man who scored a grand total of one Serie A goal in his career thus far, Valencio. But what a great job from Krunic just to win possession back to make that sliding challenge to, to win the ball back after what has to be said. It was a poor clearance, no question about it, but you still have to punish a team for making the mistake, and Milan did exactly that. You mentioned it earlier in the first half, Casey, but these two teams uh, perhaps exemplifying why AC Milan are a game ahead of Real Madrid. They have played a game. This is the very first action. It, it really, and you can tell the difference. It, can't you? You, you can. In, in just the, the little incidences are that little bit cleaner from... Milan. It's almost you know as if maybe they started preseason a week earlier, as if they had one match more, just in that in that process. And again, Carlo Ancelotti doesn't care. No. You know, I mean, yeah. It, sometimes it's nice to have those mistakes early to be able to say, hey, look, th this this isn't acceptable. Uh, and and the fact that Real Madrid didn't need to punish some lower opposition by double digits to, right. to get any kind of confidence. They're like, look, we're going to be fine. We'd rather have our players pushed against a good team early and the result doesn't matter. Yeah. Opponents with whom Carlo Ancelotti, of course, is very familiar. And a surging run from Brahim again. Lucas Vasquez getting to the byline, clipping it across, and Sportiello was at full stretch. He's able to uh, fingertip it away from danger. Lucas Vasquez is a constant presence down the right-hand side. Yeah, Brian Diaz, Lucas Vasquez have combined very well on this right-hand side. Bellingham has done a fantastic job, of, and again, Brian Diaz just pressing the defense and combining so well. And it's a couple of mistakes, really. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the difference, it's been a couple of mistakes that have been punished by Milan. It's been a poor marking on a on a corner, and then it's a poor clearance, and you know, a ball that I think Lunin, if this was match one after a preseason, would have had a better angle and made the save. So, and then every time that Real Madrid have put themselves in a good position. An AC Milan player has stepped up to make the key block. Yeah, stepping up now is Calabria, pouncing on the loose ball to put the brakes on. Help arriving, Luca Romero. Bobega looking for an outlet. Florenzi. Spins kindly for Looney. As you saw, three minutes of stoppage time. A massive crowd here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Mightily entertained. The massive Pro Real Madrid yes. crowd that is a <laughs> little bit frustrated so far. Mighty entertained, but most of them not <laughs> as happy as they might be. Hoping for. Uh, 
better things in the second half. And they will see a very different Real Madrid team in the second half, which you'll see is they have a corner to work with here at the tail end of the first. Tony Cruz jogging across to the far side. Cruz's delivery. Loose ball to be pounced upon. Valverde is there. Best ever goal scoring year last year, didn't he? Federico Valverde, seven goals in the uh, La Liga campaign. In a couple spectacular yeah. strokes. Bellingham trying to cushion the header down. It's been some moments, hasn't there, from Jude Bellingham in this first half? There really has been. And, 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 and again, it, it's when. Milan have needed to step up their defending after good approach play from Real Madrid. They've been able to do that. And once again, you know, Tamori is in the right place. He shields the ball out after what was a good combination to almost open up a, a good goal scoring chance. And so, yeah, it really has been a bend not break and capitalize on the Real Madrid mistakes for AC Milan in this first half. Indeed, it's the first half that comes to a conclusion to the Tamori header. And the thunderbolt from Romero. The difference in the first 45. Likely to see different teams emerge at the start of the second half. Carlo Ancelotti certainly has plenty of other players at his disposal. But he heads in, trailing against his old team, Real Madrid nil, AC Milan 2 after 45 minutes at the Rose Bowl. Time descends. It is AC Milan in the driver's seat in this uh, plum preseason friendly at the Rose Bowl. 2 0, the margin of their lead. And here with a header from Tamori and a splendid strike from Luca Romero. As we get ready for the second half, Casey, we expect to see all sorts of changes and some more new names. That's Fran Garcia, who appears to be limbering up for Real Madrid. David Alaba two. Yeah, Rodrigo. I mean, the list keeps going on. I mean, I think there was an expectation, you know, whenever you're playing your first match, you, you don't want to push a lot of players into probably more than 60 minutes. But I think 45 minutes makes sense for a lot of the Real Madrid players. We'll see some big changes probably to start this second half. And then I would assume as the half progresses that we'll see big changes from Milan as well. But some big stars. Yeah. And it kind of depends on how managers kind of play this off. Some of them say, OK, I'm going to try to play who I think is my starting 11 or I'm just going to do a mixed bag. And it kind of seems more of that for Real Madrid that they just understanding what this match is. It's the first match in preseason. It's more of probably a fitness exercise than anything else. Get guys used to the touch, but you're also having that fitness exercise against a very formidable opponent in AC Milan, yeah. who have who have really highlighted a couple mistakes from Real Madrid in that first half and punished them for it. Yeah, it's been interesting watching what's been going on at halftime here because all the activity has been on the Real Madrid bench, none at all from AC Milan. No one out from the Rossoneri whatsoever, suggesting that. Perhaps they're going to continue with the same lineup. Rudiger is amongst the. Yeah, if you if you think potentially, Adrian, that it's that progression from the 45 minutes in their first preseason friendly to then to say, okay, can we take that to 55, 60? Uh, and maybe that's why we didn't see a lot of players warming up for AC Milan because those changes will come a little bit more into that second half, having this being their second game. Now, you see Milan emerge into this iconic historic venue, the venue that was once called the Mansion at the end of the Yellow Brick Road. A place that has seen that so many sporting legends compete. 
We were actually talking pre-game, Katie. It's actually been a while since the US national team have played here at the Rose Bowl. The venue for the 1994 World Cup final. They used to come here quite often in, back in your day and uh, less so. Yeah, it was always kind of a combination between here and the Coliseum. Yeah. And, and then, uh, yeah, maybe it was the, the rise of the MLS stadiums that kind of moved out of some of these venues, but still always special to have said that you've, you know, you've been a part of some of these historic American stadiums. These two teams haven't met in a competitive game for a long time, Casey. I had to uh, double check this, but it's been since November 2010 since they met. And there was something at stake. That was a Champions League meeting that finished 2 2. I think Real Madrid would certainly sell for a similar scoreline as it stands at the moment. But they are going to have a completely new team. Not quite 11 substitutions, but eight is the number I'm being handed. Casey, Chiuameni is amongst them. Chiuameni replacing Tony Cruz. Uh, I can tell you Fran Garcia is in for Mondi. Danny Carver Howe replacing Lucas Vasquez. Alaba for Nacho. And Rudiger for Militao. So uh, nearly completely different. But what we now do have is uh, Venetia Studer out there. Rodrigo will be his strike partner. And Fran Garcia getting his first touch back as a Real Madrid player after a very successful time at my former club, Rio Vallecano. And it, seemed, it seems to be a little bit more of a kind of a theme that we're seeing now is, is, is teams selling players with a buy-on clause yeah. as a, or a buy-back clause as opposed to just that continual loan spell. and. Fran Garcia getting that opportunity to go out and mature as a player and now getting the opportunity to come back to Real Madrid. Yeah, here he is. Where's number 20 now? We're at three years with Vallecano. Vidi Jr. Trying to introduce himself to the crowd. They've been waiting for him. So the only Real Madrid players to survive the call from the first half, Jude Bellingham, Federico Valverde and Andre Lunin in goal. Modric gets a welcome to the game elbow and a yellow card has been handed out. It appears that Luca Romero may be the recipient for this transgression. Yeah, I don't think he can have too many complaints. Yeah, very odd, you know, uh, not quite sure why you'd kind of leave yourself in in a, in a preseason friendly, but. Still got the adrenaline cursing no. through the veins, isn't he, from the, the first half strike? There's a few players I've known that would have kicked their grandma on a friendly, but. Uh... <laughs> well, here's Rodrigo trying to light up the ground here with the right sort of service touched on. It was by Carver Howe. And this time, Modric is the aggressor. Confirmation of the players and the numbers who are now on. Chua many an interesting case. Casey after his one year. Lots of rumours swirling that he could in fact be on his way out of Real Madrid. Liverpool supposed suitors. Yeah, it wasn't as if last season he kind of broke in and really established himself. I don't think there was an expectation that he was going to. But because he didn't, maybe there was a thought process from some other big clubs that he could possibly be available uh, so far. I think Real Madrid have pushed a lot of that conversation yep. aside. But 
Well, there was a Casemiro-sized hole to fill, wasn't there, for Chouameni? And then, as you say, I'm sure he completely filled it. Taken in by Krunic, who uh, had some impressive moments in the first half, navigating his way through midfield territory again. Romero. Luca Romero, in case he grew up on the island of Ibiza. Pretty nice place to come into the world and not known for producing too many footballers. Here's Bellingham. Inside from Vinnie Junior. It's Fran Garcia. Alaba, who made his debut in this preseason fixture exactly two years ago for Real Madrid. Bellingham, two years on, doing just that tonight. the gentlest of nudges in the back on Romero. Fran Garcia had a pretty good day, didn't he? Uh, same day he signed for Real Madrid, he was called up by the Spanish national team for the first time. He's in the, uh, the Nations League. Yeah, it'll be really interesting now to see after, like you, you mentioned, that three-year successful spell at Rio where, you know, he was really able to you know, get the minutes that he needed to mature, and then, you know, it's, there's no illusion that now taking that step up, and it's a big step up to Real Madrid or back to Real Madrid to see if he truly can establish himself as a as a Champions League regular, as a as a, in, in a team that's expected to win every match they play. That's a very different sort of. Uh, Fishbowl you're in and pressure you're under, isn't it? Well, and, and, and that's highlighted by as soon as you sign with Real Madrid, you get that call to the national team. So yes, it is. It's a it's a it's a big step, and I'm sure one that Fran Garcia is is really excited to make. It's Antonio Rudiger, increasing the uh, the ex Chelsea ranks. Out there tonight, over hit ball from Chuameni. Carlo Ancelotti, uh, Real Madrid coach, at the start of his third season in charge. And what is his second spell on the club? And the, uh, all the indications are it will be his last with Brazil. The national team waiting in the wings. Loftus Sheik to Romero. Nice play from uh, Fikayo Tomori. What do you reckon about Ancelotti? Casey and the, and the Brazil national team job. No, no, I, I think it's a, a very uh, interesting prospect, particularly for Brazil. I, I think it's always when when there's that cloud of just information that, that isn't direct. There's always this little, is it happening? Is it not happening? Why has it not been official? Is it a fit? Yeah, so it, it, it's been very interesting, particularly with when you're as big of a club as Real Madrid, that there is that speculation on your manager. Yeah. He'll still be managing Vinny Jr. and Rodrigo, if he does indeed. 
ball to the cellar cell. It was almost as if Carlo Ancelotti didn't want to be the one leaving Madrid, and Real Madrid didn't want to be the one letting Carlo Ancelotti go. So there was kind of this standoff, very public standoff with Brazil. And, and it's also when you're the club the size of Real Madrid, you don't like to be you know, the one that is, is there's, oh, our, our manager's leaving by choice or, or right. leaving at this stage. You know, there's always this idea. I mean, look what happened, you know, with the whole Lopetegui situation with. Yeah. You know, the national team and then saying that I, he was going to go to Real Madrid and then the national team said, well, OK, if you want to go to Real Madrid, how about you go right now? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and not <laughs> wait for this tournament with the national team. So, yeah, it is. It's, it's it'll be very interesting to watch as the season progresses and if this gets clearer or if it just gets cloudier. Modric steering it for Carvajal. Rodrigo looking to turn on the Jets. Rodrigo! Well, all of a sudden, it opened up for Rodrigo with a scintillating surge inside. This jabbed effort brought the best out of Sportiello. Yeah, for so much in that first half, it was a case of when the good play led to the opportunity to get the shot on goal. A Milan player blocked it before before Sportiello had to make the save and you know that time Rodrigo opened up the space and Sportiello had to be quick down to his right to come up with a nice save. And then some frustration from Modric as he let the ball go. Teammate not on the same wavelength but Carver Howe. And certainly uh, showing the normal hunger. Yeah, and then the frustration again. You know, we talked about this. Uh, you know, the, the first game where passes will be off, but Rodrigo just pulls it inside. Didn't want to hit it with his right foot for some reason. Goes, or sorry, didn't want to hit it with his left and goes with the outside of the right. And in the end, he forces a fine save from Sportiello. Well, he got nine goals last year in La Liga. Also credited with nine assists. Yeah, he'll look to improve on that, and particularly so will Real Madrid. When you look at the, the goals and assists that will be none available with Karim Benzema no longer in the squad, so players will have to pick up that slack, and Rodrigo be, will be one that they'll be looking to improve off of the totals from last year. Grab both goals in the Copa del Rey final against Osasuna as well. Chipped him with some of the Champions League, but can Rodrigo and Vinny Jr. both up there? Goal scoring tallies is one of the, uh, the tantalizing questions this year for Real Madrid. Carlo Ancelotti, who uh, managed 423 games for tonight's opponent, AC Milan, he was there eight years. And seeing his team trying to come oh, back. No. Oh! Valverde will take the credit, but it's Sportiello who will take the blame. And this crowd at the Rose Bowl coming to life. Yeah, Rodrigo finds Valverde, and he just he just kind of tops this shot. And I mean, it doesn't take a, a slight deflection, yes, but still, Sportiello just makes the mistake and pays the price. Oh, who would ever want to be a goalkeeper, Who Adrian? would want to be a goalkeeper, Casey? Yep. I've never understood. No, nope, me either. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was too late when I figured that out. Could be the loneliest position in the world, can't it? Particularly minutes earlier when you make a really nice save. Yeah. Against Rodrigo, that if that had gone in, nobody would have thought twice about it. But then the shot from distance fools you, and you become the fool. Oh, it's picked off now, and Valverde's at it again! Absolutely nothing Sportiello could do about this one. 
Federico Valverde pouncing on the loose ball and pounding it home. And in the space of two minutes, Real Madrid are level. Well, it was AC Milan that capitalized off of Real Madrid's mistakes in the first half. And to start this second half, it's Real Madrid's opportunity to capitalize off of the AC Milan mistakes. And Valverde punishes comfortably as he smashes the ball home from the top of the 18. And a look of uh, pure bewilderment for Stefano Pioli. What just happened seemed to be written all over his face. I mean, two defensive catastrophes back to back, Casey, in a short space of time. Valverde, the happy beneficiary on both times. Yeah, now it's really a case of your, your squad kind of recognizing, OK, we've been we've been punched in the mouth here to start this second half. Now, how do you react? And managers want to see that. They know that it, you're not always going to have it your way. So, OK, you made some mistakes. You paid the price. Now let's see. Can you turn things around? Can you change this momentum or do you completely collapse? And those are ways that you can really find out the character of your team. And this next few minutes is going to be really important for AC Milan to see how they respond. Because yet there has to be an assumption within the next five or ten minutes there's going to be wholesale changes yeah. in Milan's side. So see how they respond now after the, the difficulties to start this second half. Yeah. Difficulties uh, is very apt indeed. And uh, Stefano Pioli not making any switches at halftime at all. As opposed to eight for Real Madrid, but you can't legislate for the sort of defensive errors Pioli's team has produced. Now Pulisic trying to get back to where he was in the first half. It's a slaloming run. He lost his footing, as did Carver Howe. Yeah, I think that was the right. I think a no call was probably the right decision. But again, Christian Pulisic being the protagonist coming in off that, that left hand side and created problems in the first half assist off of the corner for the opening goal. Two or three other chances where he took players on put dangerous balls in the box. Yeah, it was one thing doing it in that first game against third tier opposition it's a little different doing it against the likes of Real Madrid Simic sliding in defensively Stefano Pioli has uh, never coached a game against Real Madrid before his long coaching career is now the start of his fifth season with AC Milan. It never lasted more than two years at any previous job, Casey, that he'd had with the likes of Fiorentina and Lazio, Inter, Bologna. Yeah, which in some ways you'd have to say, sometimes it's hard to get things done so quickly and, yeah. and to have that enough success to give yourself a chance. Give yourself that chance to get better. To make those improvements. Another Real Madrid change coming. Yeah, it looks like just a, a slip from Pulisic and then trying to recover. Commits the foul. And it'll be the end of the road. The first road for Jude Bellingham. At least Sean at times in the first half, some good little combinations. Well, and then really what they're looking for Jude Bellingham is to be that box-to-box -box midfielder with the creative flair. And look, they're few and far between in world football, and he definitely showed moments in that first half why Real Madrid made the hundred million commitment to bring him from Borussia Dortmund. Yeah, just a tantalizing glimpse of what is to come. Bellingham makes way for young Nico Paz. An 
comes the free kick. Rudiger giving chase. Just about kept it in play, did well. Now Vinnie Junior. Two for company. Rudiger helping it along to pass, getting his first touch. Vinicius outside of the foot. And he was going for that. I'm not sure he was, Adrian. <laughs> he kind of put his hand up to apologize to his teammates. So if he was, it was it was a pretty optimistic ball to, to kind of just flick to the far post. Yeah, you could just see it was Sportiello just kind of stepped aside and yeah. put his hand up into that corner. Always going over, but audacious yes <laughs> which we know he's capable of doing and capable of trying but in some ways then you just got to hold your hand up because players are running around the pitch and you're giving possession away that's Frank Garcia on the run here well, something he did really well well in the way that Ray of played and the wing backs getting forward and the outside backs committed and and there was a great opportunity in that commitment to get into the space to put a dangerous ball in the box. Here's Carvajal. And it's Rodrigo. Cohesive build up again. Too much for Vinny Jr. And he's not going to be able to track it down either. Yeah, he puts his hand up knowing that it was the idea was right, the execution not where it needed to be. But you know, look, we know that when Real Madrid are in full flow, they're a difficult opposition in this second half with that little dynamic addition of Rodrigo and Vinny Jr. It's yes, it's it, it's forced mistakes, mistakes that Milan will look back on and say, yeah, that's thank God it's preseason. But again, they're not going to be the only team that's going to get punished by Real Madrid this right. year. Looks as though wholesale changes are forthcoming for AC Milan. Seeing at least six or seven white shirts down beneath us. Bonnie, your picture there, getting ready. Romero on the chase. Lunin venturing out to meet him. throw to Loftus cheek Combe trying to play it back to him unfortunate slip from Paz and then uh, over hit from the back by Tomori and this perhaps will give uh, Stefano Pioli the chance to make the switches no not happening quite yet and it's another Real Madrid attack instead. Rodrigo has his work cut out, does keep it in. And then beats the first man. Rodrigo, like he wasn't there, comes back for more against Florenzi. Carvajal. Well defended by Tomori. He's <laughs> gasping for breath. <laughs> well, it was. It was you know, Rodrigo looked like he had created the space twice to put the ball in the box and it was well recovered two times to make sure that the only option Rodrigo had was to play the ball back. And then as the ball got played in, it was cleared out for the throw in. But this might be the nope as it still continues a Real Madrid throw. And the cavalry is coming for AC Milan. Here's Colombo, probably knowing it's his last contribution. So nice flick too to Pavega, who's on the move. Yeah, just held on the ball too long, allowed Rudiger the opportunity to get back and make the challenge. Yeah, that's that difference. That, that difference between you know being that young player, getting into these types of matches, understanding you just don't have the time and space that you would have at a lower level. This cheek running into resistance, and now the midfield quarters are pretty empty as Paz is able to saunter forward. 
Yeah, but Milan did a really good job of just keeping those six players back to make sure that it wasn't a clear break for Real Madrid. Rodrigo, good save. Sportiello down low. Yeah, it came through a crowd. Sportiello saw it late and was able to recover well down to his left and come up with a decent save. It was actually Vinny Jr. who hit it, wasn't it? And again, just to uh, recap for those of you watching the United States, our colleague Shaka Hislop is uh, faring well. He's well and fit and heading back away from the stadium to uh, all of those of you who might have uh, been still concerned about his well-being that is good news indeed as uh, AC Milan make I believe 10 changes we knew it was coming yeah Johnny Grinder is going to come on, one of their new arrivals, Theo Hernandez. <laughs> for, for all the commentators you need out there, Casey, I think I speak for us all by saying I'm glad this doesn't happen in the regular season. I mean, there's been a lot of complaints about, about the five subs. About five yeah. subs, but how about ten at one go? It's uh, It will take us a while to sort out <laughs> who is out there and who isn't. We will bring you... That. We saw uh, Simon Kaye come out. I know uh, Rafael Liao, I believe. The Ketelaire is also out there. Silo Makers. Two Belgians are out. Malik Jao is also on. Replace Lorenzo Colombo. Simon Kier, the uh, hugely experienced Danish international. goal as well the number one is back in Mike Manion and it's Vinny lovely Luka Modric little uh, impudent flick Theo Hernandez sporting the uh, the pink hair is left flattened in his own penalty area but it's all Real Madrid at the moment And it comes towards Rodrigo. Yeah, just how hard that is for a side to make those kind of changes in the run of play and then get into the match as quick as possible. Finney Jr. bringing one of the biggest roars of the night out of this crowd. Just uh, almost ghosting through Salamakers like he wasn't there, Casey. <laughs> Again, Salamakers coming into the game a little bit cold, and Vinny having that 20 minutes since halftime. Here's De Ketelet on to Giroud, who stays down after a uh, fairly meaty challenge. Olivia Giroud sporting the new platinum blonde do. For those of you keeping count, these were the subs that came on. Yassine Adley was the one I had missed. Yeah. 
Bradley back to the French keeper. He's at the start of his third season now. Antonio Hernandez, the start of his fifth. Two French components of the Milan defence. This is one of their Belgium Salamakers. Good stretch from Chuamani to pick it off. Uh, Fenny Jr. had been uh, struggling to get back onside. Looking cross, Giroud's header! Great save from Lunin. Olivier Giroud with a wry smile. And well, he might smile because he's doing everything right here with the header, Casey. Yeah, it was a really good spell of possession from Milan, and Giroud just comes into the middle. Excellent cross in the box. That flicked header, Lunin makes the good save, and then Frank Garcia does just enough to put off Luca Romero, and Lunin was able to then get back up and collect the ball and alleviate the pressure but it was it was a good spell from Milan that led to that led to that really nice header and even better save well, Lunin who was uh, you know, possibly at fault for Romero's goal in the first half I wouldn't necessarily go as fault but definitely I think would have looked at that and said could have done yeah, better. Yeah, I could have done a little better yeah. there. My positioning was a little off and made that little hop to the opposite direction and just wrong-footed him. And but then clearly made up for it with that fantastic save. Quarter of an hour to go at the Rose Bowl. The crowd absolutely lapping this up. And in these types of matches, this is what you want to see. Two teams that are committed to attacking, committed to taking players on. You know, four goals between them. And oh, wow, loves to take players on. And that shot was goal bound. And the follow-up is wide. What a chance for Luca Romero to get on the score sheet again. I tell you what, Rafael Lau is. Well, it was it was the cross for the for the Giroud header, and then it cuts the ball back. Great strike, well blocked. I don't know if it was Chuameni or if it was Alaba who was there in the middle to make the block, and then under pressure from Fran Garcia, Luca Romero could only put it into the side netting. his best ever season. He got 15 goals in Serie A last season as Rodrigo has upended. Fair challenge from Tio Hernandez. Well, referee Timothy Ford has been consistent tonight. Certainly let them play. Well, there hasn't been, uh, you know, there has been a, you know, it hasn't been that kind of a game, no. right? I mean, it's, yeah, and you wouldn't expect it from these two sides in a preseason friendly, but, but still, it also hasn't been just walking around the field. It's there, there's been an edge to it, and yeah. that's been nice, a fair edge. And, and I think the referee's done a good job as well by by not, you know, over over whistling. De Ketela was the target of that. Charles De Ketela looking to be more of a force in this AC Milan midfield this season. 32 appearances, but only nine starts last year for De Ketela after that big money move from Club Bruges. It's almost picked off by Rafael Lau, who's wearing uh, number 10 for the first time this season. Alaba.
Carvajal inside to Valverde. Nicely done by Frank Garcia. On to Paz. Yeah, Nico Paz just seeing if he could fell into a three white shirts and tried to come out the other side and the Milan defense able to now in possession in midfield so a little bit different I think in this shift for Real Madrid maybe not quite as high a press as we saw for a majority of that first half and I think as these changes have come it, it, it looks like the Milan players after those wholesale changes have started to get more comfortable yeah. done a little time to get up to the speed of the match. And Tio Hernandez, of course, a former Real Madrid player himself. He's continued his run here, Tio. Son of the player, back to Romero. Yeah, the son of one of my former teammates. So. Yep. Yeah, he played uh, two years for Real Madrid, 13 appearances. His brother at Bayern Munich. Yep. So yeah, it's a uh, impressive what the two brothers have done. French internationals really, Teo I think really capitalized in his World Cup appearances from the unfortunate injury to his brother. Yeah. He's become a regular contributor of goals as well. One of the highest scoring defenders in Serie A as that's touched. Salamikas. Minutes to go. Stefano Pioli, who's 103 of his 189 games in charge. Paolo Ancelotti has been in charge of rather more. Real Madrid's next stop on this US tour will be Houston. Play Manchester United on Wednesday. Official, well, official attendance, Casey, okay, 70,814, which is classed as a sellout. Capacity is slightly lower nowadays here at the Rose Bowl, but I don't think many of them would be asking for their money back. No, entertaining game, definitely. I think a lot. A lot of hugging going on in midfield at Salamakas and yeah. Vinny Jr. Yeah, yeah, Vinny took offense to something, and and then in the end, everybody was all hugs. Looney to Carver Howe, nicely done, Chua Many. Mentioned it finished 2 2 the last time these two teams met when it really mattered. The Champions League all the way back in 2010. Competitive meetings over the years between the two, also very even, six wins apiece, three draws. At uh, Fran Garcia breathing down his neck. Yeah, Salamakas did a really good job of just recognizing that it was coming. The tackle was coming and needed to get his body between the man and the ball and won the free kick for his side because if, if he doesn't get that right, Fran Garcia is off to the races. Rafael Leo tackled definitively now. Vinny Jr. trying to add an exclamation point. Vinny Jr. It's what they came to see tonight. And 
Vinny Junior so rarely disappoints. And Real Madrid have come all the way back from 2 0 down to 3 2 up. This is how it happened. Yeah, it's a good challenge. Leo makes a good run. Valverde, and then what an unbelievable recognition and pass from Luka Modric. Kerr has to respect the pace of Vinny Jr. Doesn't see him behind him, sneaks in behind, and then has the composure to just pass it past Mignon and Real Madrid take the lead. What a what a change the second half has been for Real Madrid. But again, Luka Modric, what a ball to recognition of where Vinny Jr. was, played it in behind. Vinny Jr. holds off the Dane and then has the composure of the finish. Perfect ball, as you said, from Modric, weighted and uh, picked off brilliantly on the run by Vinny. See Milan must be wondering, Casey, what they've done wrong in this second half. They haven't done anything wrong particularly. It's just, well, a couple of defensive a, a errors. A couple of mistakes, yeah, a okay. couple of individual mistakes. And, 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 and you just can't afford with the quality of, of Real Madrid to make those mistakes. Look, you got the benefit of some uncharacteristic mistakes from Real Madrid in the first half. And then you can't gift those opportunities back to them and expect not to be punished. Modric, the ageless Luka Modric. How much longer can he keep on going? Uh, it's time to take a look at the man of the match brought to you by Direct TV. And it is Federico Valverde, Casey. I don't think too many would argue with that. She's nope. two goals, just two minutes apart. And, and his run of play throughout the match has been strong, a reason why he you mentioned that it was the best ever goal tally last season, and he, and he looks to want to build off of that this year in, in the form in the opening game of their preseason this year. Picked off by Pass. Again, going to dink it for Vinny. Kier able to uh, stay with him this time. <laughs> and then Vinny just trying to lure him in. Romero coming to the aid of the Danish defender. Well, that, that's unfortunately, those are the situations in preseason that will get you kicked. Right. When you start, you know, trying to showboat late in the match and you got to be a little careful with that. Vinny Jr. Happy to play with a chip on his shoulder, but sometimes that comes with consequences. Yeah. Now Malik Jow across to hold the run of Rodrigo. Well, how many games has he lit up? It's joining Real Madrid almost exactly five years ago to the day since he joined from Flamengo, Vinny Junior. Yeah, it took him some time to settle. And now it'll be a different level of responsibility on Vinny Junior's shoulders without cutting Benzema on this side. So important for him to accept that responsibility, you know, take that on his shoulders and really help his side out and clearly a Real Madrid side that'll be disappointed with the way Barcelona ran away with the title last year and we'll look yep. to put that put that right this year. And both these protagonists tonight will be looking to push on from their league. Position of last year, AC Milan, of course, finished fourth in defending their Serie A title. Yeah, then two Champions League semi finalists that will look to yep. take it that step further. 
was the final that might have been last year had Manchester City and Inter not taken matters into their own hand. But now... Some late drama. Yeah, Giroud standing over this. And his fellow countryman, Theo Hernandez, showing some interest too. play. Simon Kier is also in the mix here. You see Milan. But it is Giroud after all of that. Oh, it's a brilliant hit and it's just wide. Hit the stanchion behind the goal. I'm not sure that Ludin would have got there, Casey. Well, Ludin stopped. Giroud scoring on the header early in this half. And Giroud thought he had found the equalizer. <laughs> it does not miss that corner by much. Really well taken as it just fizzes past and then ends up hitting the stanchion behind. But excellent free kick from Giroud. And Lunin very relieved to see that just go wide and high. 13 goals last year in Serie A for. Olivier Giroud, who's now 36. Three minutes of stoppage time. A bit of miscommunication ends up with Vinny on the prowl. Inside two, Vinny Jr. There were many trying to get in on the action. Well, AC Milan as Real Madrid set off on their travels. AC Milan will stay right here in LA. They play Juventus here next. And then finish up in Las Vegas against Barcelona. It's a heck of a preseason. Yeah. Real Madrid have. Uh, Spell in Texas and Houston and Dallas against Manchester United and Barcelona, and then finish up in Orlando as uh, Giroud tried to help that on. That may be the last chance to get back on level terms. I think both sets of fans have to be really excited of the potential of both these sides going into their respected seasons, particularly what you're seeing in the attacking third of the field that they're. There's some very exciting goal scoring components for both of these teams. Well, this was Real Madrid's 50th game in their history in the United States. They first started coming here nearly a century ago, 1927. It's their first ever visit. Galicia Soccer Club in New York. They first played even here in L.A. back in 1961. When you got to come over by boat, that's a commitment. Yes, that's that's impressive. By 61, they were probably flying just. <laughs> that was a game where they came here and beat L.A. United 9-0. Rita Hayworth. The ceremonial kickoff. This is Theo Hernandez. Last chance now for Rafael Lau. Good service. Oof. Touched away with Romero crashing in to meet it. Yeah, excellent touch from Frank Garcia. Just really well defended at the far post. And Theo Hernandez does a great job of just creating this in the midfield and then finding Leao. And anytime Leao has the ball at his feet. AC Milan believes something can happen, and it almost did. Reinder is going to take this corner. This really is last chance to load 
Teresa Milan, it's a disappointing delivery. And with it sounds the final whistle. Well, the vast majority of the Rose Bowl will be going home very happy indeed. Carlo Ancelotti save his victory against his former club. Exchanges uh, kind words with Stefano Pioli. But Real Madrid are off and running in their pre-season. They were made to work for it by AC Milan, who led 2-0 at the break, but then those wholesale changes by Real Madrid helped to turn the tide. Lots to look forward to for both these teams for the rest of pre-season and into the regular season. My thanks to Casey Keller, my partner tonight, and all our production. Thanks for you for being on board here at the Rose Bowl. Real Madrid winners by three goals to two.